Bien, bien. <rire> bien, bien. Bien, bien. Pam, 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 pam. Pam, 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 pam. Pam, 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 pam. Pam, 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 pam. Pam, 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 pam. Pam, 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 pam. Pam, 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 pam. Okay guys, we are here today. It's a new day and we are watching Thor. You can't really see her too much. You can kind of see her, but Ophelia is laying right here in front of me on my desk. My cat Ophelia and she's just she's just hanging out and I'm honestly so happy that she's here for Thor. I'm repping my pretty new crew neck. It says Asgard and it has Asgard and it says Home of the Gods. Uh, this is from the entertainment small shop uh, called Sage and Sprout. I'll leave a little link <laughs> here, there, and you everywhere to their uh, Instagram and their shop. They are one of my favorite small shops and they just dropped a bunch of really, 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 really cool Marvel apparel um, that I bought way too much of. But anyways, I highly recommend them if you are a Marvel fan like me. I just love all their stuff so, so much. So yeah, not sponsored, not affiliated in any way. I literally am just obsessed with them. So if you're watching this, Sage and Sprout, hi, I love you. Anyways, back to Thor. Okay, oh, also Ophelia left. Tragic, I was kind of hoping she would stay and she's laying down on her cat tree. So kind of tragic, was really hoping she'd stay but it looks like she's kind of going down for the count for her nap. Um, anyways, Thor, okay. So as I mentioned, I think earlier in this video, it's honestly, I've been filming this one video for a while now. I've seen Thor once back in like I think 2017 and I thought it was good. We love Chris Hemsworth, we love Tom Hiddleston, all that stuff, but I didn't like love it and I wasn't expecting to love it because so many people talked about how the first Thor, first two Thor movies, but specifically the first one since that's the one I was watching, aren't the best of the Marvel bunch. Um, so I went in not really having too high of any of expectations, you know? But now, as I mentioned I think earlier in this video, Tom Hiddleston has become one of my favorite human beings on earth this past month. So I'm very excited to watch this for him. For every reason. I'm just, I'm excited to go back to Asgard and to watch this movie again and to see Thor. I'm excited obviously for everything, but I'm just especially excited to watch Loki's first movie. I've been dying whenever I kind of, my whole thing with Tom Hiddleston in my brain started like a month ago. I wanted nothing more but to just go and watch every Loki movie. And I didn't because I knew I was gonna be filming this video and I wanted, I didn't wanna watch it and then watch it again in a couple of weeks. I thought that would like damper my reaction or whatever, damper what I'd have to say. So I held out until now and the day is here. We are watching Thor. Let's get right on into it. I'm so excited. Oh, we're still not under the Marvel. Lo or Disney Marvel logo yet. Interesting. Okay, does it happen with Captain America the First Avenger or do they switch over to Disney at the Avengers? I'm thinking now maybe Captain America. I'm placing my bets on that. I was placing my bets on Thor. Incorrect. I was wrong there. Can we just talk about how they've been filming Thor Love and Thunder the past couple of months and I am just the most excited for Thor Love and Thunder? Like Taika Waititi's back. Natalie Portman is back. Chris Hemsworth is back, obviously. No news on if Tom Hiddleston will be in it because, you know, he's kind of busy being in his own TV show, but like, I would love if he was there. I would love if he'd make an appearance. We don't know what's gonna happen in the Loki TV show. We don't know if it's gonna, what's gonna happen to maybe bring him back to be associated with the other characters. We don't know yet. So anything's possible, theoretically. Pretty much everyone knows he's gonna be in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So, he could literally, he could be in Thor 4. He could be in anything. I just, I'm so excited. Eric, I, I, I totally forgot that young Darcy Lewis was in this, Kat Dennings. 
I her character was like not I wasn't affected by her much the first time I watched this but then she was in WandaVision and I was like oh wait she was in Thor like I totally forgot her character existed so now it's like really exciting to see her here where did he come from he came from the sky obviously Norway 965 AD hello Oh right, this is Norse mythology, so obviously it makes sense. Norway, hello. Came the frost giant. Is that? Is that? That's not the Tesseract. <laughs> no, okay. That was just some ice giant thing that causes ice to spawn. <laughs> that ice giant looked like the Night King in Game of Thrones. Yeah, he d he looks like the Night King, like somewhat. Oh my God, that is just beautiful. Oh my God, and it just keeps getting prettier as they keep zooming in. Oh, what? Is that young Thor and young Loki? Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> I'll hunt the monsters down and slay them all. He sounds like Chris Hemsworth there. Maybe it's the the Asgardian like accent, but like he did really well at sounding like Thor there. Only one of you can ascend to the throne. Why not both? Why can't you have two kings? Like I get that's not how like, like that's not how a monarchy works, but like when both brothers are totally capable of being king and honestly, it could be easier to rule as a team, like, you know, discuss things and stuff. Like, you're Asgard. Break the mold. Both be king. When one of you becomes king, you can make the rules. Make it so both of you can be king. Just saying. That would have made everything a lot easier. <laughs> Honestly, not a fan of the long hair Thor. The look he got in Ragnarok, where he had his hair cut. Impeccable. Nothing has beaten it. I've seen, like, shots of him filming Love and Thunder and his hair's back long again. Why won't they cut it again? Why can't he have it cut again? Just cut it. It looks best that way. Like, that was his upgrade in Ragnarok. Oh my god, Tom Hiddleston, hello. We'll find the breach in our defenses and it will be sealed. As king of Asgard. But you're not king! One thing here with the whole Loki or Thor becoming king, in that previous scene when they were kids, and Odin was like, one of you is going to become king. But then in this previous scene, he says to Thor, he refers to Thor as his firstborn. Typically, in a monarchy, the firstborn son is the one to become king first. And then if Thor were to die, it would then go on to Loki if Thor didn't have any, you know, sons or whatever. So why did Odin, when they were children, like, allude to, oh, it could go to Loki, like, it's- it was never gonna go to him when Thor's there and when Thor doesn't have any sons. Hello? Why did he make that so, like, vague in a sense? Why wasn't it, like, he, it seemed like he should be- he should have been prepping Loki from a young age. That, like, I'm sorry, son. Son, not your fault that Thor was born first, so he will be in line first. But, you know, you'll be a prince. You'll be fine. Like, it was just weird that he kind of made it seem like, oh, it's up for grabs. Either one of you could get it. It's like... It'll come. In time. <laughs> Summon a little lightning and thunder and the mortals worship you as a god. This is Jotunheim. My father fought his way into Jotunheim, defeated their armies and took their casket. I recognize that guy. I recognize him. Is that Josh... Dallas? I think it's his name maybe, maybe from Once Upon a Time? Hold on a minute. This movie came out in 2011. Once Upon a Time was definitely on air at that point. I think that was even the first year it was on air. Am I right there? <gasps> oh my god, I'm right. What is he doing here? Why am I so good at recognizing these somewhat obscure actresses? First, the lady from a teacher who popped up for literally one scene in Iron Man 2 and now Josh Dallas from Once Upon a Time? Why do I recognize these obscure actors? I mean, they're not so obscure, but they're kind of obscure compared to the main stars. It's like, and I see them and I'm like, I know that face. I'm, I'm good with faces. Terrible names. I'll forget someone's name despite maybe having said it a million times in my life, but I apparently 
I remember faces very well. One thing that I think is interesting about this first Thor movie is just kind of the reasoning as to why it doesn't work for many Marvel fans. In my opinion, one of the things that just doesn't work, not only with this movie, but I think with just Thor as a character, is the whole grand, regal, dramatic aspect of him. The whole, like, I am Thor. Like, it works, but then, like, like it works. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It does, but, like, not as well as it should. And I don't blame them, because when you think of gods, that's what you think of. They're grandiose. They're, they have that dramatic, powerful voice of someone who's lived for a millennia and stuff like that. Like, that is the general tone of, you know, mythology and stuff like that when you have a god or whatever. But I think what really just then, what they didn't know they needed is Thor needed to be funny, which you wouldn't expect. You wouldn't expect that necessarily in Norse gods, like a story about Norse gods. You wouldn't think that. You'd think, oh, yeah, drama, regalness, whatever you would call that that tone, that's what you'd think of. And it works great with Loki, even though I, I haven't seen from the Loki trailers, he is going to be comedic as well. And that's, I can already tell that works perfectly for him as well. But I don't know why. I think it's because Chris Hemsworth is a very comedic actor. We can really see that in The Cabin in the Woods, which was one of his movies that came out the same year as Thor. He's hilarious. And I can tell he's hilarious in real life. So I think he's good at playing the whole regal, grandiose Thor, but like, I think just because he's a general funny person, funny works for him better? I don't know, but I think that's just a really interesting thing, is how you'd think, oh, with these movies, the grandiose North mytho Norse mythology regalness, that would work, but it's like, for some reason, comedy is what these people, what is what he, specifically Thor, needed, oddly enough. Idris Elba, right? Not Idris Elba. Him being in, in these Thor movies is so random to me for some reason. What happened? Silver tongue turned to lead. <laughs> Everyone is bullying Loki and I am not about it. Leave Loki alone. Honestly, what a dead looking planet. Like, are all the frost giants just like inside? Are there not many of them? Because it doesn't seem like there are too many buildings. Your father is a murderer and a thief. And what? They really are giants. I honestly thought Frost Giants was just a name. I didn't actually think he was a giant. Okay. Somehow in that initial battle we saw at the very beginning, they did not look like actual giants next to Odin. But here you could clearly tell they are giants. <laughs> Loki, you have magic. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was like, why are you just standing there? Bruh. That was so cool. I did not realize he actually used his magic in this movie. They are not willing to have Loki actually use his magic. They tend to have him use a weapon and it's like, hello, you have magic. You are literally a like wizard in a sense. Ah! Oh, bye Josh Dallas. You did not last long. But honestly, you had a hit, a hit show with Once Upon a Time coming out right at the same time. So I'd say you're, you're pretty fine. Oh, that was a cool, we, cool, that was a cool, that was a cool move. We love a superhero landing. We love it. There won't be a kingdom to protect if you're afraid to act. Wait, so Josh Dallas is like still alive. Is he not dying yet? Thor, Odin's son. It honestly blows my mind that Anthony Hopkins is Odin. It doesn't look like him. I don't think I ever realized when watching any of the Thor movies previously, that that was Anthony Hopkins. It's the hair for me. I'm not used to seeing Anthony Hopkins with long hair. Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, he shall possess the power of Thor. Oh. Oh. Interesting. So just now the hammer came to be where it's like you could only hold it if you're truly worthy? I thought it was always like that. Interesting. So that's then how Thor knows he's truly worthy again is that he's able to wield the hammer again. Oh, who are you? Oh, the other, the other little pew was um the hammer. It's like the sword and the stone kind of. So we're gonna find him. 
Okay. Stellan Skarsgård. I knew it. I knew I recognized him as well. Oh, yep, it's turned into like an attraction of sorts. Try and pull the hammer from the rock. <laughs> They're barbecuing. It's a whole party. <laughs> Stan Lee. <laughs> oh, he's alive. Josh Dallas lives to see another day. Oh my god, he's gonna turn around and he's gonna be a frost giant. Or like, look like one at least. Oh, that's so cool. What more than that? Oh, that's so cool. Tell me! Oh my god. This is going on Facebook. Smile. <laughs> All the answers you seek will be yours once I reclaim your name. Meow meow. <laughs> meow meow. Mima. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. It's Foster, I'm Agent Coulson with S.H.I.E.L.D. Is that supposed to mean something to me? You can't do Jane. this. Agent Coulson has been in almost every single one of these movies so far. I didn't remember him being in any of them except for the Avengers. Wow. I'll email him and maybe he can help. They took your laptop too. Maybe you go to the library. We can use their computer. <gasps> Oh my god, is it Loki? With the horns! Oh my god, he looks so cool. Father has fallen into the Odin sleep. The Odin sleep? <laughs> I knew it. He went to the library. I called that right there. Wow. How long will it last? I don't know. This time it's different. We were unprepared. Wait, so an Odin sleep is like an actual thing? thing that he's done before? She just like abandoned Stellan Skarsgård at the library. I guarantee he's done by now. Like he was just gonna be standing in there reading that book on Thor and stuff for maybe another five minutes. <gasps> Whoa! Hello Hawkeye! Hello Hawkeye! So Idris Elba can just like see everything? He can see what's happening to Thor right now on Earth. Imagine that. Look, look, it's Muma. Muma. <laughs> Muma. What? Those bleached eyebrows are a choice. How many movies do they keep that up for? After all I've done for you. So you're the one who showed us the way into Asgard. That was just a bit of fun, really. So he was the one who did it. Shame on you, don't you care? Josh Dallas seems so young in this movie, but like, this movie came out the same year that Once Upon a Time started, and he seemed so much older in Once Upon a Time. He had a deeper voice. I don't know, maybe he's just changing up his voice a bit for this movie, but like, these were filmed somewhat around the same time. Maybe this was first and then he filmed Once Upon a Time, or maybe Once Upon a, Once Upon a Time was first, I don't really know. It's just interesting because it seems like this was maybe like five, six years before Once Upon a Time, but that's not true. <laughs> They're so excited! <laughs> then I need no longer obey you. Oh no! Idris Elba! <gasps> disappeared! There you go, good job. Oh, never mind. What's he doing? I have a feeling whatever Thor is about to do right now is gonna be what makes him worthy again. This just seems like a very heroic moment, knowing that he is only human and that he does not really stand a chance against this metal fire creature thing. Yep, see, he sacrificed himself for all of the humans and for Jane, and now he's worthy of the hammer. So is this gonna, like, make him not, like, technically human anymore as well? Is he gonna, like, go back to god status? Because honestly, this is reminding me of Hercules. <laughs> the animated Disney uh, adaptation. Where, like, he was trying- Hercules was trying to, like, earn his god status or whatever. Look at him go. 
Look at that. Oh, and he's getting all his armor back. Yeah, see, he's going back to God status. I don't think you've been completely honest with me. Know this, son of coal. <laughs> son of coal. That's so funny. Time to open the Bifrost. He's currently kind of frozen, so. I'm down. Oh, but he's trying. He is trying to escape. I'm down. If you can hear me, we need you now. I'm down. We need you. He could just hear between the realms. That is fantastic hearing. <laughs> he looks like Superman there. <laughs> And your death came by the son of <gasps> Did he just kill his own father? I think he just did. Was that all a part of his plan? That they will pay for what they've done today. I think this is all his plan to make him look like a, look make him look like a good guy. <laughs> there is some Loki magic that I feel like the MCU is Severely lacking in. Oh, bye, Loki. See you in Avengers. Oh, that's a fun one. These are cool credits. Love this. Thor will return in the Avengers. How exciting. So, this has got to be a hint to Captain America, right? What's gonna be in the case? It's the Tesseract, right? Oh my god. Well, I guess that's worth a look. Well, I guess that's worth a look. Hello? <laughs> oh my god, guys. Well, that was Thor. That was Thor. That was Thor. Fun. That was pretty fun. I can see why it's not the favorite amongst all of the MCU movies. There are some slow parts when it gets to be that second half. There's some parts where it's like, okay, let's move it along here. Like, and it's even, it's less than two hours long. It's like an hour and 55. And there are some parts that it's like, kind, kind of drags a bit, you know? But Chris Hemsworth is amazing. Tom Hiddleston is amazing. Natalie Portman is amazing. Anthony Hopkins is amazing. Idris Elba is fantastic. All of them did a great job. I don't think they were the issue with this movie at all. I think it was just more the writing possibly and just kind of the pacing in my opinion. Like in some parts, not the pacing of the whole movie, just aspects of it. The, ma the main highlight of Thor is just the introduction of Thor and Loki. It's like we were needing them in the MCU, in this world. Like we were needing some new characters. At this point, all we really had were Iron Man and Pepper Potts, Samuel L. Jackson and Agent Coulson, uh, Black Widow, and then technically the Hulk, but like, you know, that doesn't really count anymore and he ended up getting recast anyways. So we needed to see like an introduction of a new character, like just going in the order. It's like, okay, time for someone new. And I'm so excited to watch Captain America, the first Avenger, get a new character introduced. So I will see you all for Captain America, the first Avenger. All right, guys, it is time for Captain America, the first Avenger. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've ever worn this shade of blue on my channel. So, you know, changing it up a bit, but we're doing it all for Captain America here. I'm wearing one of my favorite new sweatshirts I got. It says on your left. And I know that technically isn't a thing until Captain America, the Winter Soldier, but this is my only Captain America themed article of clothing and it's also in his colors so it's gonna work for the first avenger as well let's jump right in i really really enjoyed this movie the first time i watched it and i've actually only watched it once all the way through the first time i watched it like back in 2015 2016 ish so i'm excited i love how it's technically kind of like a period piece it, it doesn't take place in modern day like most of the movies do introduction of steve introduction of bucky introduction of peggy i'm so excited let's get right on into captain america the first avenger 
still Paramount. We still haven't gone over to Disney. What's the first Disney Marvel movie? Is it the Avengers? Or does it go into phase two with Iron Man 3? I was so sure we'd be over to Disney by now. This is in 2000, when did this movie come out? 2011. This movie came out in 2011. I was sure that the Disney Marvel deal happened in like 2009 or something like that. I guess not. Or I guess they maybe hadn't implemented it into the movies as of yet, maybe. They're gonna find the shield. I remember this scene. They're gonna find the shield in like the ice. Oh. Oh, that's his ship, right? Yeah, that's what he was in, right? They're not only gonna find his shield, they're also gonna find him, right? There's his shield. I don't care what time it is. This one's waited long enough. Oh, that's so exciting. One of my favorite symbols in the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe is Captain America's shield. I want one, like one of the replicas of them you can get on like Etsy or something. I want one so bad. Is that Filch from Harry Potter? No, it's not. It just kind of looks like him. That's not Filch. Hydra. Hydra, hello. Oh my God, is that the Tesseract? It is. Oh, goodbye. Oh, that's a fake Tesseract. That was fake. There it is. Probably my favorite of like the Infinity Stones, uh, the, the Time Stone, which, you know, is the Tesseract. Like if I had to choose, probably my favorite. Oh my God, it's baby Steve. It looks so strange. Cause it's like, you know, it's like CGI. They CGI'd his face on another guy's body. It looks, and his voice does not fit. It looks so strange. Speaking of the Tesseract and the Time Stone. Oh my God, Space Stone, Space Stone, not Time Zone. I keep, I keep thinking it's the Time Stone because as y'all may be aware in Avengers Endgame, Loki uses it to like teleport and it's like him messing with time and reality as we know from the Loki show that's about to come out but no, it's the Space Stone. Space Stone. I can't believe I mixed that up. It's literally my favorite stone, the blue one, the one that's the Tesseract. Space Zone. Zone? Stone. I can't, I can't speak. But anyways, speaking of the Space Stone and it being my favorite of all of the Infinity Stones, I actually, not too long ago, got this necklace from Etsy. I got this necklace, which is just you know, like a, a regular stone, but it's presented as being the space stone. And like, look at it y'all, it is so, oh no, can I get it to focus? Can I get it to focus? Here's my little, my little space stone. Here's my little version of the Tesseract until I can get a real replica of the Tesseract. Cause picture how cool that would be, like sitting on my shelf and like one that like, I've seen ones that like glow in the dark, oh, and they're just so cool. They're so cool. Anyways, enough about Infinity Stones, back to the movie. <gasps> He's gonna say I can do this all day. This is that scene. Oh. I can do this all day. Yes, yes, Steve. <gasps> Pick on somebody your own size. Oh my God, it's Bucky. Oh, we love Bucky. It's so weird to think about how Iron Man or Tony Stark's dad is in this movie. That is just weird for some reason. Is that Stanley Tucci? I don't remember that. I didn't remember that Stanley Tucci was in this movie. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. His face just does not fit on that body. How did they also do that? Like technologically, like did... Obviously the guy who's that, who is that body, like he was standing there, but then like, how did, how did he film the scenes? How did Chris Evans film the scenes? How did that work? I need to see some behind the scenes on that. That is so cool. That is just so cool. Recruits, attention. It's Peggy. What's with the accent, Queen Victoria? I love Peggy. She's one of my favorite of the female characters in the MCU. This week, we will choose that man. Let's go! He will be the first in a new breed of super soldier. Literally. He will literally become a super soldier. He got the flag! 
He's so smart. I love that for him. Oh my god, that was great. He's a bully. You don't win wars with niceness, doctor. You win wars with guts. Bruh, is that a grenade? <gasps> Get away! Get back! <sighs> oh. Oh, I love what that conveys. I love that that conveys that he would be the one with a real grenade. He would be the one to sacrifice himself to not calm the blast, but like stop the blast from being worse for everyone else. Like he take the hardest hit and helps ev save everyone else while everyone else just scatters, protects themselves. Oh, I love that. That was so sweet. <laughs> He just crouched over it and like got into a little ball. That was so cute. Honestly though, just me. I'm not too well versed with grenades, but if I had been in that situation and if like if actual an actual grenade was thrown in, depending on how long it still had it, usually there usually is. I don't know if it's beeps, but there's usually a little bit of a delay time, right? Personally, if I were Steve in that situation or if I was just in that situation in general, I would quickly pick up the grenade and throw it in the air. Surely, there could, if you're close enough to it, there could be enough time to do that. Instead of huddling over it, grab it and throw. Just throw. There's no one up in the sky, at least to the height you're probably going to get the grenade to, and then it'll blow up up there, and maybe that would work. It just depends if you have a really good throw. If you could really throw it up and far away, like maybe not straight up in the air, but like up and out, because then it'll... As long as you throw it high enough and far enough, it won't blow, it won't get to the ground before it blow up. It would blow up in the sky. So as long as you can get it up enough, it would then not really cause any damage for anyone. But that's only if you're a good throw. I don't know if I actually could do it. I, my throw may not be strong enough to do it. It may still impact people. But it could help. I don't know. That's just my idea. If, if you have a better idea or if you don't think that would work, please let me know because I... That's just my first thought of how to deal with a grenade really, really quickly. His serum is the Allies' only defense against this power we now possess. If we take it away from them, then our victory is assured. I love how they're hiding him to, like, hide how he really looks. It has been given. Because this is Red Skull, right? His name- I'm fairly positive th the name that they call him is Red Skull. I'm, like, 90% sure. We may dim half the lights in Brooklyn, but we are ready. Oh, I forgot Howard Stark was involved with this. That's really funny then later on for him to meet Tony Stark. It's like, huh, your dad helped me become who I am today. Kill the reactor, Mr. Stark! Hand it off! Kill it! Kill the reactor! No! Don't! I can do this! Yes! Oh my god, this is such a good scene. I love this. That's so iconic. Now, did his pants grow with him, though? Because I'm pretty sure he got taller as well, and I feel like, I don't know, his pants may not fit the same way. She's such a good shot. That was such a good shot. She's so cool. I can't get over the fact of how in this scene, because it requires so much running, they had Chris Evans wear these like fake artificial feet to run in and the pictures of them that you can find online are so weird because like you can't do that much running on streets barefoot that's just that would hurt so bad so like it makes sense what they did but it's just like looking at them up close because it's meant to be something where it's like they're he's running so you can't really tell that they're fake but it's like it's just weird looking at pictures of what the fake feet look like go get it i can swim oh he's so cute did he just punch through glass like, I know he's a super soldier, so I guess I could have assumed that he, he could easily do that, but that still just surprised me right there. He just punched through that probably pretty strong glass. If you play ball with us, you'll be leading your own platoon in no time. Aw, it's the first suit. This suit is so cute. And the original shield. That mask is just ridiculous. I think it's the eye holes right here. It's slightly like too thin looking, but I think it wouldn't look good thick either. There's just something not right about how that mask looks. 
Maybe it's the little like wings up at the top. Maybe that's what's making it kind of weird. I don't know. Or maybe it's how we can see his chin. Maybe if there's like a chin guard. I'm trying to remember how his regular mask looks like with his regular suit he starts to wear. I think it's they need to cover up his chin. If I read the posters correctly, you got some place to be in 30 minutes. I really did not remember much of this movie. Like I completely forgot that they make it appear as if Bucky is dead when he's not. I'm fairly positive he was just captured by Hydra and now that's when they're going to turn him into a super soldier as well. Listen, okay, I was about to say, I know you're a super soldier, but I feel like you have not been a super soldier long enough to be confident in jumping out of a plane like that. He had a parachute. Thank God. It's Bucky! I didn't expect to see Bucky again in this movie. Oh my god, that is so creepy. Red Skull! Oh my god, the cheekbones? The eyebrow area is so enhanced. Or like, I don't know if enhanced is the right word, but like, y'all know what I'm trying to say. Oh, oh, that, did you hear that in the score? The bum, ba ba ba. That is the same little score theme that they play when Captain America in Endgame catches or wields um, Thor's hammer. Oh man, I don't know if they played that at any other point within any of the Captain America or Avenger movies, but that was a direct- that maybe that's the Captain America theme? I don't know, but I love that- not even really callback, the one in Endgame is the callback, but I love hearing that and being able to recognize it, that's so cool. Stanley! I thought he'd be taller. <laughs> right about what you did. Oh, the- It's- it's- what's her name from Game of Thrones? and Hunger Games, and the Tudors. You saved nearly 400 men. I thought I recognized her voice. What's her name? Natalie Dormer. Oh my God, I com completely forgot Natalie Dormer was in this. I took the liberty of coming up with some options. <gasps> oh my God, is he gonna introduce the shield? No, no, that's just a prototype. What's it made of? Vibranium. vibranium. It's completely vibration absorbent. Oh, is that maybe why it's called vibranium? Because it's a vibration absorbent? Yes, I think it works. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, that's so exciting. How is it already like scuffed up though? It's not all like brand new and shiny looking. It already looks like he's been using it for a while. I guess that's what they're trying to convey. It's that that wasn't his first mission. He's been on a bunch of missions now. This is definitely not my favorite iteration of the Captain America suit. I think it's just, again the little like wings up there. I don't know. I think I'm trying to remember all the suits. I really like the one in Winter Soldier. So I guess we'll have to see as we continue this marathon which suit iteration is my favorite. Oh, he has a picture of her in his I think compass thing. How did he get that picture? Pictures are kind of not that easy to come by at this point in time. It's like, when did he get the time to get a picture of her? Oh God, oh God, oh no, Bucky. Oh, oh God, Bucky. Well, we know that's not the end of him. Hydra's gonna save him and turn him also into a super soldier. And we'll see him again in Winter Soldier. Yes, we love when he starts throwing the shield and like it then it coming back to him. It's so cool Oh, that is my favorite move with the shield throwing it and then catching it or having it come back to you That is one of the coolest things How oh Whoa! How does he get out of this one? I on it. Oh, okay. He gets in the gets in the plane thing. Yeah, there we go. 
I would, um, instead of, okay, he's going to do it. I was going to say, instead of both of them just focusing on fighting, I would go and fix the plane so you don't die from the plane crashing. Then you can go back to your little tussle. But it's like, fix the plane so you don't die that way. <gasps> oh my god, hello space. Oh yeah, because it is the space stone, but why, why is it showing him space? Oh, is this what brings him to Vormir? I think so. Yeah, that totally just brought him to Vormir, right? It's called Vormir, the planet that then Clint and Natasha go, go to in Endgame. Oh. I remember the first time I watched this, this made me so sad because I loved Steve and Peggy together and I wanted them to be able to end up together. And I thought it was never gonna happen. I thought that ship had sailed, wasn't meant to be, that type of thing. But then Endgame happens and makes all my dreams come true, pretty much. All my 2015 dreams of wanting them, wanting them to get that dance together. I, that's all I wanted and I, it's, I'm still in shock that it actually happened. Dare be late. Understood? No, I still don't know how to dance. This is still so sad though, that like he couldn't make the time that she wanted him to make originally. But then he got back, he got back for her. Okay, now, now we're flashing forward to like, 2012, right? From what I remember? Or is there gonna be credits first and then we're gonna go to 2012? Okay, yeah, we're going to 2012 now. We're gonna see him wake up in modern day. <laughs> Just imagine getting passing out when it's like the 40s and then waking up and just everything is completely modern. That would be such a crazy experience. I don't even know what that would feel like. That'd be crazy. And especially in New York City. Like, it'd be one thing if, like, oh, he was kind of in the middle of nowhere, so he had a bit of time to adjust. But, like, no, he's plucked down right in the middle of a modern, bustling city. Oh, right, and they made everything look kind of like his time period to help him not freak out initially. <laughs> yeah, that must look weird to you. This building is way too high, high tech advanced for the 40s. I had a date. Aww. Aww. And that's it. That's the last line. <laughs> okay, is there an end credit scene? Oh, right, it's this. And isn't that like one of the first opening scenes in Avengers as well, right? Is him with the punching bag. Trying to save it. Oh. Oh, this isn't. Oh my god, Loki. Oh, this is a trailer. Why are they showing a trailer at the end of the movie? Oh wow, this is a throwback trailer. Okay, I don't want to get spoiled too much. I'm leaving that trailer. Okay, that was Captain America the First Avenger. That's a cute little movie. It's honestly really fun. It's kind of, in my opinion, on the lower half tier, like on the lower tier of the MCU, but not too far, uh, too far down, just in like the lower half in my opinion. It's fun, but in terms of like Captain America movies, Civil War is definitely superior in my opinion, and I believe Winter Soldier will be superior for me. It's been a long time since I've watched Captain America Winter Soldier, so we will determine that very soon if I prefer the first Avenger over Civil War or I mean over Winter Soldier, but everyone loves Winter Soldier. Everyone talks about how it is like one of the top tier Marvel movies. I remember enjoying Winter Soldier, but not loving it as much as so many other people love it. But we'll see on that front what my ranking ends up being of the Captain America movies. I still know obviously Civil War will be number one for me, but we'll figure out what comes in second and third place soon. We just got one movie left in phase one y'all we've got the avengers i am so excited the avengers is definitely my favorite of um phase one and i'm very excited i also just love loki in this movie so much more than thor even though he's great in thor i just love when he really really becomes the villain and oh it's just so good i'm so excited i'll see you in the avengers here it is Hold on, I wanna watch it again. I wanna watch it again. Oh, it's so good. I just need to watch it again. I'm watching it again. <laughs>